checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. All right, uh, mailbag at wrestlingobserver.com. Let's jump into some of these here. This person here says, why doesn't AEW upload full matches to YouTube like WWE and TNA do? It's been five years now. They have more than enough content to post full matches. I believe that, that has to do with their contract with uh, WBD when they signed the exclusive contract. This person here says, uh, wrestling peers saying Daniel Garcia, the angle on dynamite when MGF turned more heel on Garcia and hit him with a pile driver from the second floor to write him out as both a storyline reason and reportedly his contract is up. I mean, he hasn't, I mean, I shouldn't say, I don't know. When, when they did the angle, he had not signed a new contract. I had asked around and it wasn't like people thought he was leaving. Um, but I don't know. Do you know more? Well, what I know is when they did that angle, they were aware that he may not be back. And so the angle was done in case he doesn't come back. And if he does come back, then they've got a storyline uh, feud with MJF. But, I mean, I know he had been thinking about it, or he had told people he had been thinking about, like, what he was going to do, which he should do. I mean, of course you should. You know, you check with both sides or whatever if your deal is coming up. So yeah, I, I don't think it's 100% that he's coming back. I will say that. But uh, I don't think that he has resigned or decided to leave yet. But that was one of the reasons that he was taken out of storyline or taken out in that storyline. Do you believe the uh, AWTNA relationship was one-sided? He said the... Uh, Brian Hebner recently spoke about it on a podcast... And Moose also spoke about it and used the term selfish. No. TNA was the, I mean, AEW was the bigger company. So, I mean, um, I would say the same thing with the WWE relationship. It's in, it's in, in the end. Um, you know, you, I mean, if you have two somewhat equal companies, it's one thing. But when one company is so much bigger than the other, I, I'll tell you what. I can't say, I mean, like, I can't say that because Kenny Omega and Rich Swan did tremendous business for them. Um, and Kenny Omega's original appearances did tremendous business for them, much bigger than they were doing at the time. Um, after Kenny Omega left, did they go back and lose that, that younger demo? Yes, they did. But um, it helped them, you know? I mean, it helped them short term when, when Omega was champion, especially during the pandemic. Um, so can't say, I can't say it was selfish when they sent their, uh, you know, one of their biggest stars over there. Um, did, uh, you know, I mean, did they get a lot of the wins? Yeah. Yeah. But that was, that was inevitable. I mean, when you have one company much bigger than the other, it's always like that. All right, this person says, what was the story behind New Japan running two shows in China in September 1990? Were they successful and did they ever go back? I believe that they were successful, but I don't remember. I don't remember them going back. This person here says, "Is there any political barrier why, with CMLL as to why Willow Nightingale cannot defend her CMLL women's title in AEW? Seems odd. They couldn't just defend the title against Diana. I don't think it has anything to do with CMLL. I think they just want to be able to do a contenders match to set up a title match. Well, we'll find out. We'll find out if uh, if Willow beats Chris." then there might be something to that. If Chris wins, then obviously there's not. This person here says, why hasn't Tony Khan made Blood and Guts a pay-per-view event like WWE has with War Games? It would be more beneficial as they wouldn't be restricted from the amount of violence they can or cannot do, and they wouldn't be limited, uh, limited by all the commercial breaks. They also could even fit in a women's Blood and Guts match since the show would have to be more than two hours. Oh, uh, man. I don't, I don't like the idea of... I know WWE does it. If I, I got a thing against a women's blood and guts match. I mean, I don't. But I I don't want to see two of them on the same show. But, um, you know, you could do it. There's, I mean, there's no reason you could do it either way. You know, the, I mean, he's a big tradition guy, and his tradition is, is that he does this thing every summer on television. So um, they don't have a summer pay-per-view. You know, they got the Wembley. Shouldn't be at Wembley. They got better stuff to do shouldn't be at forbidden door doesn't fit there doesn't really fit for double or nothing so it doesn't really fit 
in, in his summer tradition. Could you do it? I mean, if they want to go to 12 pay-per-views, could you do that as a summer pay-per-view? Absolutely. I also feel that, like, um, they almost always do anarchy at the arena. So it's kind of like you do one pay-per-view with anarchy in the arena, and then you come back with a pay-per-view with blood and guts. I think one of it's, it's probably better to have one of them on TV. This person here says, back in 2018, it was reported WWE purchased the WWC, uh, WWC Puerto Rico library. But as of today, virtually nothing has been done with it. I believe not even clips have been used for other WWE projects. For what it's worth, w, uh, WWC Puerto Rico has been televising old matches from that same library as a part of their Sunday's show classics segment. Did that deal fall through? I don't think it fell through. I think that they just never did anything with it. They got a lot of libraries. You know, they got they got um, um, OVW. I think they got Smoky Mountain. You know, there's a lot of the stuff that they got that that they don't do anything with. This person says instead of Wembley next year, do you think it would be a better idea for AEW to drop all in down to Craven Cottage, where he could still draw no. twenty six, twenty seven thousand? No. no, no, no. I, um, I mean, they could do it. And I know that Tony Khan wants to do a show at Craven Cottage. Um, I just, it's, it's, I just, I actually was told what the cost was to do a show at Craven Cottage. It's, it's really tough for the attendance that they could get. I mean, they have to charge like a lot for tickets. I mean, I suppose you could do it. Um, you know, yeah, you know, if you go in there with the idea that, you know, you're not going to be able to get enough people at Wembley in a third straight year. Um, so you, put in a 25,000 seat place. But a lot of the draw is the idea of wrestling at Wembley. The idea of wrestling at Craven Cottage, I don't think is gonna be a big draw. So that specialness is kind of taken away. But the, 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 the cost of getting Craven College, uh, Craven Cottage, I should say, uh, acceptable for a pro wrestling show is very, very high. Like it's, it's, that's, that's a tough one economically. And uh, finally, this person says, could the change of the collision theme song, in addition to being a cost saver, also be an indicator that any potential future for it might be on a night other than Saturday? It's possible. Yeah, every, any, anything you can think of is probably on the boards. Um, but it's possible, you know. Still waiting to see how this thing ends. I don't know when we're going to find out. You know, there's, I know many people who are waiting with bated breath for this one but it well, is not of course it is still not it is still not happened yet and uh let's actually do one more here because it plays into this weekend how soon before the event is wwe reduce ticket prices there are still a bunch of seats available non-secondary market across from the hard cam for SummerSlam. now priced at two thousand dollars third row yeah uh don't have an answer by the way did you notice that they extended their their, their pre-show to three hours yeah the pre-show is three hours to go head-to-head yeah. -head with collision because collision is going earlier they moved collision to not go head-to-head -head. that's why it's on at five o'clock um i had thought they were gonna put collision on friday night um which at one point was the plan that's why they're taping on thursday um this week but um, for whatever reason, they went, they're going to get, you know, they're not going to do a good number for collision. Oh, it's going to be brutal between, between SummerSlam and the, um, and the NBA and the, um, and the Olympics, I should say. It's going to be real, real tough for collision this week. But, um, you know, yeah, I mean, because, because again, I've, we've seen for when, when WWE has a show, even if it's in the afternoon, it's not head to head. People just, you know what I mean? You only got so much wrestling that you're going to watch in one day. And, um, you know, they're they're putting the pre the pre show itself. I don't think hurts at all because I don't think a lot of people watch the pre show. I mean, WWE pre shows. I mean, they are serious. Lo the most boring waste of time I've ever seen. I mean, everyone is so patterned. They never say anything. They do that WWE speak, which, you know, I can handle that for like fifteen minutes, but for three hours, it's freaking torture. That that you know, it's like if like if they said something interesting or they gave some insight. Well, it's not torture because you don't have to watch a three-hour pre-show where well, nothing happens. That's my point. Nothing happens. So I don't think the pre-show hurts, but what does hurt is people are going to go and just basically do this thing of, I'm watching this three or four-hour show, and it's probably going to be four, not three, um, and I don't need to be watching another two hours on that same night. 
Um, you know, I mean, they've had afternoon shows and then the night the night rating. You know, hours later, the AEW night rating isn't good on those nights. So, so, um, but you know, yeah, they're uh, they extended the the pre show to three hours so they get the hour jump. I mean, what do you need with a three hour pre show? You don't Seriously. need a three hour pre show. You, you don't even need you, you don't even you don't even need a two hour pre show. One hour is fine. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.